Join us and help us continue to support the many talented people of our community. Learn how to get your business highlighted on Lacrosse Local. Go to lacrosselocal.com and click on advertise. Prevention is the key to a healthy life. That's why Gunderson Health encourages you to learn about vaccines and how they can help you and your loved ones stay healthy. Vaccines protect against preventable diseases and viruses by boosting your body's defenses. Visit GundersonHealthFacts.com to learn more. Artspire is back on June 10th at the Pump House Regional Arts Center. Enjoy live music from Nicholas David, Charlie Boy, and High and Rising, plus a fine art fair, interactive art projects, and visual and performing arts. The event is free to all. Learn more at artspire.thepumphouse.org. We chatted with Andrew Thompson, saxophonist for Purple Funk Metropolis. We discuss origins in music, the path from jazz to funk, and the origins of this seven-piece instrumental band. Catch them live at Midwest Music Fest in Winona, Minnesota. You can find more conversations, food reviews, live music, weekend picks, and events on our website, lacrosselocal.com. I'm Amy. And I'm Brent. And this is Lacrosse Local. I was born in Stillwater, Minnesota, and lived there my, my whole life until I went to college. So started playing saxophone in fifth grade and then got into jazz in you know junior high and high school. And sort of later in that in that era decided that I wanted to, you know, get kind of serious about it. So I went to music school at Drake University for a second and then transferred up to the U of M. University of Minnesota, where I met the guys who are currently in the band. We most of us met like in the music program there, doing jazz and stuff. And yeah, have have sort of like played in several different iterations of bands and whatnot in the in the mid 2010s, and eventually started playing together under the name Purple Funk Metropolis, sort of as like a last minute, just sort of sort of goofing around with a friend who was doing a studio recording project mm. that he needed to record some large type of instrumental band for. So that's sort of how it was born. And uh, yeah, just just really enjoyed jamming with the guys and we were all good friends at that point. So yeah, just kept just kept making music and, and jamming and, and writing stuff and eventually started recording and mm-hmm. playing gigs and whatnot. So, so in those early years, you just joined band because you liked to or was there family me- members? Was there music in the house that made you want to pick that up? Because I mean, your type of music is jazz, funk, seems like something that's like you're definitely a team of professional musicians coming together to pull this off this isn't you know like a garage band sort of thing like where did that sort of influence come from immediate family is not particularly chock full musicians my siblings played instruments in high school as well and so i I don't know i think me being drawn to it in in a more serious matter is kind of just a fluke but i think (laughs) i had several friends along the way who sort of like their enthusiasm for jazz and for other various types of music, like were able to sort of like convince me to, to really be obsessed with it in the same way that they yeah. were. And so it was kind of just like, once we, once we all met like-minded obsessed musicians who are, and you know, we're all into slightly different things come from more of the background of being obsessed with jazz and, and mm-hmm. rock when I was slightly younger and other people have, in the band have different things that they were obsessed with when they were growing up too. But I think it all, it all sort of like channels into whatever instrument each person was uh, doing their thing with at the time. Our drummer is super amazing and, and has just, for as long as I've known him, just been like obsessed with the drums in a very particular way that sort of comes across in his playing. Our piano player is brilliant at classical piano and and Cuban style and other like Latin American style piano playing. So there's like a, a, just a wide range of people like fully exploring the extent of their specific instrument and like that all kind of comes together and into a melting pot when we, when we all play together, I think. Do you think also being instrumental, is it kind of like that all seven members to be the front man of this band? Did, does that make sense at all? <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, you kind of tear off and have tear off and have your own sort of personalities through it. 
Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, that's a good that's a good point. The approach has sort of like changed over over the years, where it's kind of like after a while, you're like, oh, it'd be it'd be super cool if like for this part of the song, like it's just a bass, like everything cuts out, but it's just a little bass line thing here, or like everyone cuts out except the two guitars do a little like dual thing, or like or it's just like drums and trumpet for a second. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. so, it's we we all like like know each other so well and like have hung out so much that it's kind of like it that kind of stuff can happen supernaturally and it is kind of like you know after playing the same songs for you know a handful of sets it's kind of like once you get comfortable enough with songs you can sort of mess around with different textures like that which mm -hmm. is which is cool and also to that point i think like just having each person be able to sort of like have a have a part in the song you know because because they are kind of constructed less like loose jam funk tunes mm -hmm. that are you know open and more more of like solid arrangements that are constructed like a song you know that a, a singer songwriter or a you know rock band or whatever would would craft where there's sort of a beginning middle and end but then within that framework it's it's kind of fun to like explore you know what what freedom do i have outside of this part like can i sort of step out a little bit and like interact with the drummer in this little area or like what can I do to support the soloist in this section so it's, it's kind of fun to like explore mm -hmm. within the framework of like a quote-unquote song you know how each instrument can shine on its own in a in a particular way so playing Midwest Music Fest in Winona Minnesota I mean just checking out your videos it just seems like you just got a, the crowd rocking but what can people expect from li your live shows if they haven't seen you yet yeah you know it's a good time i hope <laughs> it's it's loud it's dancey but it's also it's got like you know it's got moments where you feel like you're watching some like high octane jazz you know some fast like soloisty kind of stuff It's also got moments where it's it's entirely devoted to like getting everyone dancing. Mm -hmm. You know, there are moments when we sort of like go crazy and just try to get like super dense and loud. And there are other moments where we try to like bring it down and like I said, let certain instruments or soloists shine. And and yeah, we, we try not to make it, you know, you know, the classic jazz thing where we just go down the line and, and take solos. And in that regard, we're trying to like keep the energy up the whole time keep the crowd crowd engaged everyone's interacting so yeah it's it's kind of like sometimes i describe it to people like who who don't typically seek out looking at instrumental music or seeing instrumental music live sometimes i describe it like it's it's it doesn't feel like you're watching an instrumental band you know you don't have to be instrumental music head or a, a funk head or a jazz head to to have a good time it's it doesn't feel like there's like we're missing a vocalist that being said sometimes we have guests do vocals on some tracks and it's always a great time it's always like super fun to have guest vocalists step in and and sing some songs with us that won't be occurring at at midwest music fest but we will uh we will certainly bring some bring some heat we got a we got a fun set lined up so what's coming up what's coming up down the road are you gonna be touring a bit more or is there an album on the way we've got some songs in the works our last album was released january 1st of 2022 so since then we've written some more some more tracks and then yeah we've got some got some fun shows coming up instagram facebook you got a we got a website purplepumpmetropolis.com we got merch up there if you want to roll into the midwest show in style <laughs> <laughs> get the merch Lacrosse Local Podcast is a production of River Travel Media. Do you have an interview idea you'd like to share with us? Message us on Facebook at Lacrosse Local. Find out more about us at lacrosselocal.com. And you can subscribe to the Lacrosse Local Podcast on your favorite podcast app. If you like us, rate us five stars. We appreciate it.